With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving in I-75, just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. I talked about my book, The New Awakening. I truly believe that our nation needs an awakening. America has been impacted by awakenings three times in our history, and at times of great darkness upon the land, when the people moved, our nation was changed, and I believe we're living in such a time as this, but we, the people of God, must understand that word that he's speaking. We're asking you to help us share uh, about this book, It's free of charge, so it's not like it's a money-making venture by any means. It, to me, is a prophetic word he's given, and that's why I'm giving it to the body of Christ. On Tuesday, I'll be in Dallas, Texas, on the program for Day Sky Network with uh, uh, Marcus and Joni Lamb, and we'll be sharing, opportunity to share about the book, and also I'll be preaching a message there to share with the greater body of Christ. I believe it's time. It's time. It's time. And this isn't just something for us. Amen the people of God collectively, but I believe as individual members of the body of Christ to understand that whatever situation we're finding ourselves in, we should be positive and know it's not a time to sit back and see the enemy come in like a flood and say, oh no, what's going to happen? We're living in a time when this concept of terrorism and the world that we're seeing, it's not going to get better immediately. There's going to be some darkness upon the earth. The Bible says even gross darkness, but it's in that time we will arise and shine and we will have a message and we must understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down the strongholds. And so we need to know that as never before. Amen? Amen. Now, having said that, I want to go to this particular story about uh, the children of Israel, because at this time in their history, the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. And the commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harasheth Hagom. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned something very important, and that is about prayer. There are some things God will not do until we pray. That's why Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Anytime God wants something, he has it. Amen? But he has chosen instead of just acting on his own to include us in his plan, and that's why prayer is so important. In this particular verse, it tells us that the children of Israel were crying out. How many know there's times when we get down in prayer and by faith we say, Lord, I know what your word says. I'm going to believe you're going to do something mighty. And how many know sometimes we're praying, oh, Lord, help. (laughs) Anybody know what I'm talking about right now? It's the desperate prayer. And that's the way the children of Israel were at the time. And we can see how God's hand is moving in this situation because he allowed the heaviness so the people would cry out. Sometimes we don't do what we're supposed to do. Sometimes we'll just settle for things that aren't what they're supposed to be. And we'll just kind of go along with the program and not ruffle any feathers. But when it comes to the point where we feel oppressed or it's really against us, that's when we say enough is enough. And that's the way it was with the children of Israel. It was one of those enough is enough times, and it was used by God to spur them to action. And I believe with all my heart, this is a time when we're going to begin to see more and more the impression of what's coming upon the land because of the darkness, but we're also going to have a people that are going to say, I'm going to rise and shine so the glory of the Lord can be seen in the earth today. Amen? Amen. Going forward in this particular story, it says that Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebedath, was judging Israel at that time. And she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebulun. Now, I want you to notice 
has not the Lord of Israel commanded. Do you see a past tense there? See, the Lord had already spoken, but the people weren't moving yet. And of course, we know the reason they weren't moving is because this enemy that they were facing was so awesome that there's no way in their mind they could make a difference. And that's why at this point in time, God raises up someone with the prophetic voice who makes a declaration and encourages the people in that which God has for them. In the book of the Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 20, it says, if you believe the Lord, you will be established, but if you believe the prophets, you will prosper. We still believe that God is a God who speaks today. Can we hear an amen on that? We also believe in prophetic ministry. That's why the book I'm sending out is a prophetic word, and that's why I believe that it's important, even in the preaching of the word, that there would be a prophetic aspect to it so that as this word is being declared, faith would well up within you to believe, wait a second, I know that God can help me make a difference in my situation. A lot of times people are believers, but they just live in life accepting the status quo. This is just the way I am. This is just the circumstances I'm a part of. Oh, I'm always going to be this way. And you just kind of learn how to get in line with what you see as just the natural way that things are going and the natural way of who you are and just say, well, this is who I am. But with the prophetic word, God begins to declare and says, wait a second. If you will hear my voice, you can know you will not be limited by the human condition, nor will you be limited by your own ability, says the Lord. If you will hear the word that I'm speaking, you will know, says the Lord, you can break out of an impossible situation. You can push forward when the wall seems so big, there's nothing logically that can tell you to push forward. And if it's that big, sometimes you just got to go over it, says the Lord. Amen. How many glad the Lord will help us to do that? And so many times as Christians, we are believers, if you would, but that's a passive tense where God wants us to be active in our faith and believe that we're not going to just accept the world in which we live. We're not just going to accept the conditions as they are, but we're going to believe that God can take us a step farther. So Deborah was the prophetess who encouraged them to do just that. Now, in this next verse of scripture, it talks about the interaction here. It says, and against you, I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots, his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. Now, wait a second. Against you, this is God speaking. I will deploy Sisera. Wait a minute. That's the enemy, the commander of Jabin's army. What do you mean, Lord? You're going to deploy him against us. Well, the Lord says, so that I can deliver him into your hands, says the Lord. How many know the Bible says, and you hear me say it all the time, some people think, well, I'm tired of him saying that, but I got to say, we serve the God of all things. How many know all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose? Now, that doesn't mean that we just passively sit back and say, well, this is just the way it is, and I know all things are going to work out. No, sometimes God will allow Sarah, or he'll even do it because he deployed him. He said, I'm going to have this guy stand up against you, I'm going to reveal to you the problem so you'll do something with it. Now, that would be something inside, too. Maybe you're facing a situation you never faced before, just like Ashley was talking about. She has a bold side, but when it comes to speaking in Spanish, uh, there's this uh, more timid side of her that's coming out. Sometimes we have a side of us that comes out and we think again, well, that's just who I am. That's the way I am. And the Lord says, no, when that comes up to you, you see something that's resisting you, whether it's a circumstance, whether it's a person, or whether it's something inside of you, God says, I want you to know something. I'm the God who delivers, says the mighty God. So when you see something in front of you, say, Lord, don't say, Lord, how did you let this happen? Say, oh, Lord, you expose this because you're going to give me victory over it, Father. I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so 
That's why you're facing the situation you're facing, and you're saying, well, why did this have to happen? Because the Lord wants to deliver you, says the mighty God. He doesn't want you oppressed anymore. He doesn't want you held back anymore. He doesn't want you accepting the status quo anymore. He wants you to know it's time to arise and shine so the glory of the Lord can be seen upon you. Amen? Amen. Now, this next verse of Scripture goes on to say that Barak said to Deborah, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in this journey. You are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. I have over this Scripture true leadership, and I want to talk about both of the people involved in that. First of all, Deborah, who was a woman, which we'll get to in a little bit, the mother in Israel, and also Barak, who was the commander over the people of God. You see, a true leader has to understand that with God's help, we can do all things. But we have to realize that it can't be about us. It has to be about something else. Now, when talking about mothers, I think it's always good to talk about the idea. How many know in church we can talk about the fact that men and women are different? Come on. How many know in the world they don't like stuff like that? Because in their mind, if you say there's a difference, then you say one is better than the other. No, God needs us to be different. Amen? And some of those things are assets that give us a a, a voice that's able to help. And sometimes it can be a liability, if you would. And so, of course, we have to know how those things work together. But for many, many years in what was called the women's liberation movement, people tried to promote women. The idea was always like, well, one of the reasons we don't have more women in leadership is institutional things that are against them. And there was a certain level that was true. And that's why laws are necessary to break institutional things that hold people back for whatever reason it is. But one of the things that was not always understood, and this is a reason we have to say this is because it didn't recognize the strength of women, is they've recently done studies about this as people become more serious about the difference, and they find out that oftentimes women are much more willing to lead by influence. Men have a t- typical idea that there's always an hierarchy, and so the idea is who's the highest one on the scale. And, and, and typically, even in an organizational structure, people are about thinking, well, where exactly do I measure up in this thing? But women have this ability to live in life just like they learned as moms who are raising kids and realizing sometimes the biggest change you'll make in the world will be from the kids you raise. Come on, moms. Can you say amen to that? That's why God's looking for that godly seed. But also understanding how that oftentimes you're in a situation where you're comfortable with the fact that through your influence you can guide events that are going on. Now, again, just like it was with Eve, how many know Eve made a big mistake? And sometimes our greatest assets can be our worst liabilities. So whereas a woman can oftentimes be comfortable with the idea that they're sitting on the sidelines and influencing indirectly, sometimes it can be taken the wrong way. I remember years ago, about 10 years ago, there was a woman called, the movie called The Big Fat Greek Wedding. How many out there saw that? There's a story about a woman in the movie, she's young and she wants to do things her father doesn't want her to do. And he's like, you're not going to do that. And she's like, oh, the mom goes, don't worry, honey, it'll work out. No, it won't. You know, the dad is the head and he stands strong on being the head. It's never going to happen. She said, honey, he might be the head, but I'm the neck that turns the head. (laughs) And uh, the next part of the story was her showing the daughter how that she went in and talked to the father, and when she came out, she's like, told you I'd do it. And of course, the girl got what she wanted. Now, again, that can be an example of taking that the wrong way and doing things like Eve did, where she wanted to help her husband, but she didn't help him by doing the right thing. But it is true to the fact that women have been given special skills and also an ability to influence, and that's your place, oftentimes influencing in an indirect way, 
not always in a direct way. Now, as you know, at Mount Zion, we believe in women in leadership and ministry and all kinds of things, so I'm not speaking against anyone or any position, but it's important to understand there is this unique ability to influence in an indirect way, and even though Deborah was the leader and the person in charge, she felt totally comfortable in saying to Deborah, you know what, if you fight this, you can get the glory for it. But Deborah was willing in this case to be a person who would lead through her influence on somebody else. And of course, that's a very important concept in body ministry because how you know, it should never be the idea that one person has to do everything or one person gets all the glory, if you would. Deborah knew who she was. She was comfortable in her position. She was anointed of God. The children of Israel recognized that anointing, and because of that, they came to her, and as was quite contrary in the times in which she lived, she was the leader and the judge of Israel because of the anointing that was put upon her. How many know she must have had a lot of confidence in God's calling to be able to do what she did? Amen? She wasn't trying to protect protect herself or make something happen. She just knew who she was. And because of that, she was willing to lead also through influence. And and Barak also is a good example here because he was a person who was goal-centered and not self-centered. For him, it wasn't, well, am I going to be the one getting the glory or is God going to get the glory? And that's why, whether it was Deborah in her position or Barack in his, both of them had to recognize, let's not be self-centered in this. Because if we're God-centered and centered towards the people, we're going to see the victory. Amen? And, And that's the mentality that God's bringing to the body of Christ today. And certainly on this Mother's Day, we have such wonderful examples, both in our mothers, but also in Deborah, who was a mother of Israel. Look what this next verse of Scripture goes on to say. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted, and the travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased, it ceased in Israel, until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. Isn't that an amazing story? And again, as I was mentioning in the opening, and I shared these stories in the opening because I want to accentuate the fact of the mother, is how important it is for us to recognize the power of a person who's willing to give their life to produce life. And to me, this scripture and talking about Deborah as a mother in Israel, we encourage this in our ladies in the church. And like I said, Mount Zion, we certainly believe in women in the ministry. But I also want you to know that we are what? The bride of Christ. Now, the Bible tells us that when we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive that life-giving spirit. It's an oxymoron that God has said concerning us, we are the sons of God, we are the bride of Christ. And both might require a stretch if you're a lady to be one of the sons of God, but as men, how many know we have to be the bride of Christ? And with that in mind, we have received the Holy Spirit. It is a life-giving spirit, and the world needs that life-giving spirit that we have, amen? But just like for moms, we understand we don't produce life unless we're willing to give our life. That's why I love that new song Ashley was singing today, that when, when my knees touched the ground is when I touched heaven, or when I was willing to give of myself, that's when something happened. That's what God is speaking. Of all things in this day, we live in a world that's very self-focused. And that's why a lot of the changes in our culture are happening because we're saying to people, well, if it brings you happiness, just do it. We're not going to hold you back. We need to be libertarians. We don't want any laws or any social or cultural structures that will hold everybody back from satisfaction. Why? Because we've had a whole generation that said, me, me, me. And God says, the world's going to understand being me focused is never going to bring you happiness. That's why in the church, we got to be on the forefront of saying, we're going to give our life. We're going to know that giving life can come when we give our lives, and we have to be willing to do that. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that one day the bride had made herself ready, 
And when she made herself ready, the groom said, come to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and gave her a banquet in which all of her enemies were put before her. I tell you, church, we need to know that we're moving into that time, but the bride has to make herself ready. Just like in the natural, we want mothers in Israel, and that's why I want to recognize Sherry and our other mothers in Israel, just to give you a little glimpse of an example that God is speaking to each and every one of us, that we are the mothers, we are the life givers as Christians to our world in which we live. Where you are, you're the life giver. And if you want to give that life, you got to be willing to give your life. And if you lose your life for Christ's sake, you will find great victory is going to come your way, thus saith the Lord. In this next verse of Scripture, it goes on to say, when leaders lead in Israel and when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Lord, when you went out from Sarah, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled, the heavens poured, the clouds also poured water, the mountain gushed before the Lord, this Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. Notice verses 4 and 5 is God moving to bring the victory. But it came first in verse 2 when the leader said, okay, I'm going to start leading. And when the people said, we're going to willingly offer ourselves. We're living in a time when most people in positions of authority are kind of putting their finger up to the wind to find out what direction it's going in because they want to be on the winning side. And I see this as a pastor who researches what's going on in the body of Christ. And oftentimes they'll say, well, polls are showing. If you want to reach millennials, you got to do this. Polls are showing. And, and they give you ways to kind of figure out what people want so you can give it to them. I don't want to give people what they want. I want to give them what God wants them to have. Because there will be a people that understand when they're willing to give their life up, whatever their cause is, that's when the power of God is going to be released. And that's why, as Christians, we have to understand we're called to be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. We are a nation of kings and priests, the Bible says. So we need to take our leadership in a world in which we live. Don't just flow with the stream. Stand against the stream and make a difference, and then willingly commit ourselves all together for the purposes that God has for us as a people in this day. This next verse of Scripture says, And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent. If any man comes and inquires you and says, Is there any man here? You shall say, No. Then Jael Heber's wife took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple. It went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. I have over this the peg of deliverance. Now, this is interesting because Sisera was a mighty commander, a commander where most of the people were afraid of him, kind of going back to the story about David and Goliath. And when he went to this tent, he said, tell me if any men are coming, because in his mind, there was no threat as long as there were just women around. Come on, ladies, how many know that's not true? Now, I know sometimes ladies are different men, and when I go to movies, I like to see them where the guys go in and shoot the enemy, blow them up and all that, and Bonnie's like, I don't want to go to those kind of movies. This was a movie Bonnie would say, let's not go there. I don't want to see somebody drive a peg into somebody's head. Come on. I mean, the Bible is pretty serious business from time to time. But what I want to point out to you is the person he saw as no threat was an absolute threat because she took up God's cause. Amen? And as the bride of Christ, we need to know something, church. We're living in a world where the world thinks they can put us in our place, so to speak, and they'll say, well, believe what you want, just don't tell anybody about it. Believe what you want, but just don't try to force your ideas on us. They're pushing, 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 but I want you to know something. That which they think is no threat is the greatest threat. Because God is going to give us the peg of deliverance, if you would, and we're going to see great and mighty is the Lord our God, and great and mighty is He. I'm going to ask everyone, please, to bow your head. 
God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.